Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica, and today we're gonna to be talking all about hand spun yarn. So recently I was cleaning out my stash and just kind of reorganizing my room and I realized that I have two full baskets of hand spun yarn and I've probably never shown it to you guys. I also get a lot of questions on it when I do it for a podcast. So today I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about hand spun yarn, what it is, how it gets into yarn form, um, and then I'm going to go through all of the pieces that I've actually finished. I know not a lot of you are spinners, but I still thought it would be kind of a fun video to shoot for you. So hopefully you enjoy it. If not, I'll be back next week with some more sewing and quilting content. So let's just dive right in. In. So hand spun yarn is just basically the act of taking fibers from an animal or nature like cotton or flax and spinning it into a useful yarn that you can then make something with like a hat or a sweater or something like that. There's a ton of different fibers out there. I've had fun experimenting with some of the different ones. I have kind of gotten into a groove of what fibers I prefer to work with, uh, but you could really use all kinds of different things. I've seen people spin yarn out of camel, yak, angora, alpaca, merino, silk. Um, I've actually seen somebody who knit a pair of shorts from the fur that they brushed out of their husky. They managed to spin that up and knit it and it's just the craziest thing. So there's all kinds of different fibers out there that you can have fun and experiment with. But basically when you get your fiber, you can either make your own or you can buy it pre-dyed now from a lot of different vendors. Now you can spin fiber just kind of raw, just you know, as it gets sheared off of a sheep or something like that, you can just take it and spin it. Most people like to do what's called carding it, and that means they're either hand carding it or running it through a carder, and that just means that you're running those fibers through a fine tooth kind of comb that sort of just brush them so they're going all in the same direction. So for example, I have this little bit of spinny, curly dyed fibers. This would be kind of hard to spin. You can see it's kind of felting together a little bit, but what I can do is I can run this through my carter. It'll kind of brush it out and get into more of a usable format, but I could just pull it right off of here and spin it just like that. Now this is what it will look like once you've carded it. And this is a bat that I purchased. So someone took the time to pick some fun colors and card them all together into a bat that I can then take and just draft out and spin. And by draft out, I just mean you're gonna take this, obviously you can't twist this whole thing because you'd have a super chunky piece of yarn, um, but you just take a little bit of it and draft it out and spin it on your spinning wheel and make it usable. Once you spin it, like right now, I could just pull this off really easily. And then once you spin it just a little bit, this will probably still pull apart because I'm just doing it by hand here, but. Now all of a sudden it's got some tension on it and it's actually pretty hard for me to pull apart. Like I'm pulling pretty hard on this. So now it's a kind of a useful piece of fiber that I could say knit or crochet or you know, whatever into a useful object like clothing. You can also get fiber hand dyed. This was hand dyed by created by LCB and she just puts it into these nice braids and they're super beautiful and pretty. And one of the cool things about buying pre-made or pre-dyed fibers like this is that you don't have to think about the color scheme. The artists that dye these are talented and they're great with colors and they can put together things that are gonna look really cool together. Um, and then once you spin it up into a yarn, the same spinner could take this same pile of fiber and completely change it based on how they spin it. So there's a lot of flexibility, there's a lot of artistic, uh, kind of creativity that goes into hand spinning your own yarn. It's also a really relaxing process and it's a lot of fun. So I recently got a brother drum carter and um, it's just the standard drum carter and I'm actually having a lot of fun with it because now I can buy these kind of raw, rough fibers, silk, cotton nips, things like that, and I can card them into a useful bat and I can do any colors I want. I can really be creative and artistic with it. And then I can spin it up into some yarn and then I can make whatever I want out of it. So that's really fun. I personally have a Spinolution Echo spinning wheel. It is one of my favorite wheels. I have tried several different wheels. I felt like as a beginner, that was probably the easiest for me to get used to. Um, and it also has a hook orifice, which makes it a lot easier if you break yarn or you know when you're struggling as a beginner, it, it, is, it is a rhythm that you have to get into. It's not just super intuitive and so it's just a lot easier in my opinion, um, working with that wheel than some of the other wheels. And also with the hook orifice, I can do really thin yarn or I can do really chunky, fun um, art yarn. And so I felt like it had a lot of flexibility. So I love my wheel. If you have any questions about it, um, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I will answer. I also love my drum carter and I'm having so much fun. And then a fiber you can find anywhere. Check Etsy. There's a ton of different places on uh, fiber artists on Instagram you can purchase directly from. So just search Etsy or 
or the internet for like a combed top or an art bat or merino fiber if you're looking for a specific type of fiber alpaca you know undyed fiber you could dye your own things like that and you'll find a ton of different places out there some of my favorites are created by lcb i also love um, paradise fibers because you can buy those kind of just different colors and blend them all together to create your own if you have a carter um, i also love squid fiber co classy squid fiber co she has some really cool um, fun, unique packs. And all of my specialty fibers are in that little uh, wood box right there. But here's a sample of one of her fiber packs. And this has all kinds of different things in it. Silk, Tussa, um, and Angelina Sparkle, Nylon, Bamboo, Yak, Camel, Long Locks, Magic and Sunshine. So you can buy really cool stuff like this and then run it through your carter and just create really fun bats. And when you get your fiber, it should come in like a little bag or something like that. It should also come with a little information card that kind of tells you what it is, how much fiber is there. A typical bat for um, purchase for the most part is around four ounces. You can do a lot with four, this is four ounces of fiber and you can get a whole skein of yarn from that um, when you're spinning depending on how thick you spin it, of course. Um, the thicker you spin it, the less yardage you're gonna get. But that's just the basics of spinning, and it's just really fun. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, or you can email me at erica at Confessions of a Homeschooler, and I will do my best to answer them. Let's go ahead and dive into my finished handspun yarn. So I'm gonna show these two together. These are ones that I've actually shown in my last podcast, and these are um, yarns that I hand carded myself on my brother, Drum Carter, and then I added in some fun colors, and then I plied them with, I think both of these are plied, this one is plied with itself. This one looks like I plied it with just like a white mercerized cotton, and I probably did that so I could get more yardage out of it, so I had a little bit more. This gray one on the top, I got about 100 yards out of it, and it is just a merino silk cotton. I think I threw some cotton neps in there. And then this one that's kind of pastel-y um, was merino silk. I got 66 yards out of it, and I think I probably just threw a bunch of scraps in there. I can see some sparklies, so I must have added in some sparkly fibers as well. Uh, but these are my two most recent finishes, and these are both probably slated to become hats. I wanted something chunky and kind of textured, and I think I did a pretty good job. Now I have my baskets down here and I'm just gonna be grabbing them. Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. This one is called Country Evening. This is by, um, created by LCB. So this is one of those pre-dyed um, braided fibers that I showed you. And I loved the colors. It's got a nice blue and green. I was going for kind of a sport weight with this. I might have even been kind of aiming for fingering, and I think I almost made it. Um, I did wind this or ply this with a uh, mercerized cotton. A lot of times I'll do that so that I can get more yardage out of it. So instead of spinning this onto two bobbins and then plying it with itself, which cuts your yardage in half, if you take all of that fiber and spin it with just like a cotton, makes it stronger, and also you get more yardage out of it. So um, this one was probably one of my favorites. This is another one of my favorites, and this was from Created by LCB as well. And this was, um, I think it's called Unicorn. I think this was like Unicorn something. Unicorn poop, maybe, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, but this, I think she actually might even still have this. A lot of times with these hand-dyed fibers, um, it's kind of like hand-dyed yarn where they make a certain batch, they sell it out, and then they make another color and they don't bring it back. But I think this one she might actually still have because it was such a popular um, colorway. And then this one, as you can see, I wanted to try and spin all of those, so I kept my gradient. So this should be stripey if I ever decide to use it. It's got some sparkle in there, and this is probably one of my all-time favorite spins. And I found the tag for it. It is called Unicorns, and I got 264 yards. This was a four ounce Merino, Stellina, and Silver Sparkle. This one I spun up in, I was hoping to make a scarf out of it, and I still might do that. This was just a gray, um, I think it's a merino, and I picked this up at a fiber festival that I went to here um, in Colorado. And so it was just this huge bundle of fiber, and it was just this lovely gray. It's super soft. It almost feels like there's some maybe alpaca or something in there because it feels really soft and fuzzy. Um, but anyways, I spun this up and I can't find the tag for it. So, but I wanted to show you because it was just a lovely gray color and I feel it's got kind of like a loose vibe to it. Um, I think it spun up really well. It was just so much fun to work with. This next one was another fiber um, uh, dyed by created by LCB, it's called Coastal Calm. And this was a one of a kind, so that means that she probably doesn't still have this in her shop, but it's just got these lovely 
blue colors. And I must not have, normally I write on here how many yards I get out of it, but they're all about the same because you kind of get into this vibe of spinning and pretty soon all of your um, weight is got this same texture and thickness to it and it's hard to get out of that box and go back to doing something either thinner or really chunky and arty. So anyway, all of these are probably very similar. This one is called Candy Crush. It is 250 yards of organic pull worth. And this is from Wound Up Fiber Arts. And she has, she's the one that did the sock bundle that I spun up over Vlogmas and she does a ton of fun stripey socks and things like that with these. So um, I don't know what I'm gonna make with this one, but I think socks would be really fun. It is a little bit thicker, I think probably like a DK weight, but super cute. This next one is from Wound Up Fiber Arts as well. This bat was called Nest, and I ended up getting 180 yards of DK out of it. Um, it's got this lovely light blue kind of robin's egg color to it with um, a little bit of darker and then some kind of yellow or gold in there. Anyways, this one is super pretty. I think, um, I don't know, I'm thinking hat. I found the card. This one is called Nest Egg by Wound Up Fiber Arts. So this one I kept because this was my very first full skein spin. And this is a bat that I purchased. I don't remember where, um, but it's just white. It's got some Stellina in it. I don't know if you can see that sparkle. And it's super uneven and chunky. And there's definitely areas where I underspun it and probably areas where I overspun it. I'm keeping it because it was my very first spin and I just want to remember where I came from because sometimes in crafting you can feel like you aren't making any progress and I actually think it turned out really good. I almost want to use it for a hat because I think it would be a really fun textured hat. Um, but I am kind of just hanging on to it because I just want to make sure that I remember that, you know, I kind of started out a little crazy and now I can spin, you know, pretty much whatever texture I want. I'm not great at super fine like lace texture. I also don't have the patience for that. I also don't use that type of yarn very often, um, but I feel like if I put my mind to it, I could do it. So um, this is just a good reminder of where I started and actually I end up loving it. Even though it's a little bit crazy, I think this would be um, a fun knit. Okay, this one is super fun and colorful. This one was from Hey Lady Hey, and I don't know if she's still dying this. This was called Hey Cupcake. Um, I don't know if she's actually still doing fiber anymore, but she had really fun, bright colors, as you can see. Um, I think this would be an adorable shawl, scarf, something like that. Um, this would also be really cool to do in color work if you had kind of a neutral tone and then you use this as the like pops of color. I think that would be really cool too. And I apparently spun this in the beginning, so I don't know how many yards this is. I'd have to unskein it and recount it, but it's actually quite a bit and it's a pretty chunky skein. So uh, this was a lot of fun. This is another one. This is called Tropical Frangipani by, created by LCB. I bought a lot of her stuff. Um, and look at these colors. This is so much fun. Now this is a singles. I did not ply this with anything because I didn't want to lose those stripes in there. And I was worried if I plied it with either itself or something else, it would just really diminish those colors. And so I left it like this. I think it's beautiful. One of the things that I'm gonna try and do this year is knit um, with my hand spun because a lot of times I will do something like this and I love it so much, I'm afraid to um, make it into something because I don't wanna ruin it. So my goal is to do that because it's not doing anybody any good just sitting in my basket. So, but this is one of those skeins that just turned out so cool and um, I do need to use it. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it on yet, but it's really cool colors. So this is a fun one. This was fiber, it was called Parisian Confectionery. Um, and, oh, I didn't write down who it came from. I think this is from Classy Squid Fiber Co. She has a really cool kind of thick, chunky, uh, artistic bats in her shop. And so I think that is what this is from. You can see all those little cotton nips in there. I honestly, it's fun to spin and it looks really cool. I don't know how this works when you are knitting with it. I don't know if those little nips kind of fall out or if they actually stay in your project. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, but this was really fun. It looks like I got 174 yards. This one is one of my favorites. This is called Bhutan and it is Merino Tussa top. And this ended up at 148, oh no, 296 yards, sorry. Um, and this one is by Lisa Sauza, Knit and Dye Wear. Um, and that's kind of what her logo looks like there. Um, and this one is just such a nice uh, neutral palette. I really like it a lot. Um, I think this would be really pretty socks. This would be really pretty in a scarf. And I didn't write down what the, I would, I would say looking at it, it's probably like a DK. 
This is another bat I bought. This one is called White Birch, and it looks like I got uh, 236 yards out of four ounces. It's organic Polworth silk, yak, and bamboo. And this one was just really cool colors. These are nice neutrals. There's some dark grays in there, and of course some creams, and a little bit of browns. Um, and it looks like a birch tree, which, so I think it was named appropriately. Um, and nice and squishy. Don't know what I'm gonna use it for. This is a fiber called Pinwheel, and this is by Wound Up Fiber Arts. Um, it's 164 yards worsted slash Aran weight. I was going for something chunkier and thickier, thickier, <laughs> thicker, um, and I think that I accomplished it. It might actually be even more than that now that it's kind of dried and set. Um, once you wash that yarn, it kind of blooms, and so you have to wait to measure it until after it's like fully dry, and I think I might have measured it before that, so, because um, it looks a little chunkier to me now, but this one is really fun colors. Wound Up Fiber Arts is one of my favorite dyers. She always has really cool, bright, fun colors. This is another one. This is called Eclipse. This is from Nest Fibers, and I spun this August 2017. It was 200 yards. It's BFL and silk, and it is a two-ply, and it's got these lovely blues, and there are purples, and then there are some blues in there as well. Just look at all those fun colors. And this one was just uh, two-plied on itself, so it kind of gives it that hand-spun barber pole look that you've probably seen in other hand-dyed or hand-spun yarn. This next one is lovely kind of rose with a little bit of gold in there. This one is called Organic. Oh, this one is called Paint Me a Picture by Wound Up Fiber Arts. It's Organic Polworth. I got 480 yards out of this. So I must have been, this must be more of like a fingering weight. And it is barber pulled on itself. So um, I did a pretty good job on that one. And it's actually pretty consistent. And those colors are just so pretty. So this one I love. This is from Created by LCB and it's called Iceberg. I got 264 yards. It's Rambouillet, Merino, and Stellina. Uh, it says one of a kind on it, so I don't know if she ever dyed this again, but these blues are beautiful and hopefully you can kind of see some of that sparkle. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but that's the Stellina is the sparkle. Let me see if I can get it a little closer so you can kind of see some of that. I'm not actually sure what this is. It's kind of a hot mess. I definitely, this was one of my earlier spins. It's got my basket hanging off of it. This is definitely one of my earlier spins. As you can see, it's kind of crazy. This, I did ply it with a mercerized cotton to try and kind of hold it together, but I remembered when I was doing this, it was kind of falling apart. So this is another one of the ones that I'm keeping so that I can kind of just see my progress because this, I'm not even sure if it would be wise to knit this into something because I feel like I would be worried that it might kind of come apart in the knit. So this is another one of those skeins that I am hanging on to just to kind of remind myself how far I've come. And I don't know, I mean, it was pretty colors, but I definitely kind of got a little crazy. Here is another fun one. This is from Created by LCB. This was Meli Kaliki Maka. It was a one of a kind, 408 yards. It was four ounces and it looks like merino, silk, Polworth, um, 22 micron wool. So that means it's a little bit more toothy, um, but the colors turned out really cool. I tried to kind of keep a gradient going in that one. So each time I spin, I try and you know, learn something new or do something different. So the gradient's a little bit harder for me to spin, but I feel like I did an okay job on this one. This was uh, spun kind of a while ago, so this is probably one of my earlier spins. Um, I'm not a huge fan of green, but I really do love the colors in this skein, so no clue what I'm gonna use it for. This next one is just a really pretty blue. There's some kind of golds in there. This was from Hedgehog Fibers. It's called Wizard's Beard. This is a single ply. I got 576 yards of it, and it's a merino nylon mix. Um, and I think I should have probably plied it together because that's a lot of yardage. I'll probably never use it all. Um, maybe for a shawl or something like that. Um, but I was trying to do a single ply. Single ply just means that I spun it one time and then just took it off. As you can see, it's not like barber pulled or anything like that. So it just has that single spin to it. Most of the time, what you do is you'll spin it kind of going one way the first time. And then when you ply it, you go the opposite direction. And then that will make it a two ply. If you take three strands and ply those all together, that would be like a triple ply, four ply. You get the idea. This is a single. All right, so that is all of my hand spun yarn. That was two full baskets of yarn. So I have a lot of knitting to do. Um, it is going to be my goal this year and last year actually is to try and knit through some of my own hand spun. Like I said, I never, I'm always afraid to use it. Um, and I just need to just bite the bullet and dive right in because I have some really cool yarns 
and kind of even seeing them here on camera made me get excited about them again. So that's my goal this year is to kind of go through my stash, knit some of my hand spun, make good use out of some of these yarns that I have spun myself. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. If not, it's okay. I will be back next week with some more sewing and quilting, but I thought it would be fun to go through my yarn stash. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. So I was recently cleaning out my stash and just kind of decluttering and I realized that I have two full baskets of hand spun yarn and I've probably never shown them to you because Jax is eating a bag. It's going to be a long podcast. And so just search your Etsy shop for, uh, you know, combed top, whatever. Jax is just causing the trouble. Get off the bag. And let me get this off the floor so Jax does not eat it because he, if you have a cat, um, you're going to want to keep your fibers safe because they smell um, like whatever animal they came from and that is good for a kitty.